I have been living with an Access Cab Taco for the past year and considering picking up a new one. So today I'm going to give you my advice and the details on the two major configurations. Briefly, if you enjoy fun, detailed car content without fluff, consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications. Comfort-wise, it's a little short on height. The seat sits closer to the ground like a sedan, so your legs stretch out, but then the steering wheel doesn't adjust very far. At me at six foot three, when I'm driving in my regular relaxed position, my hands kind of feel like they're far out. But I will say that if you go with the higher trim model, like the SR5 V6 and up, you will have height adjustment, which does help a little bit with the whole thigh support situation. Uh, you can work around it. At least all trucks will have a lumbar adjustment. But going with the access cab means that you're going to give up the availability of things like leather or the JBL sound system or even a sunroof. However, at least the blind spot monitoring and crispy LEDs are available. And here is the pricing of the main trims. Keep in mind, there is no access cab on the Trail, TRD Pro, and Limited. And the TRD Pro and Trail can also only be had with the five foot bed. You can actually get a six foot bed double cab Tacoma, but that outfit is quite rare. Also crucial for me personally, if you want three pedals and an access cab, you're stuck to the TRD Sport. Now one pro to the cheaper Tacomas is going to be a better headroom because you don't have a sunroof. With that equipped, I'm kind of grazing the roof. But what you're probably most interested to see is if I can fit in the back seat. Hopping back here, one, there's a glide to it. You have to go knee first, slide, and if I needed to sit back here for 15 minutes, I could. That's a lot more than I was expecting when I originally bought one. I thought that it was really just meant for kids. And while that's probably the only audience that will find this remotely comfortable, it can work if it has to. In fact, there was one time where I had to take three people from an airport an hour away back home. And since they were all under 5'10", it wasn't comfortable, but it worked fine. You also have a healthy amount of storage back here. I just don't think I could ever imagine someone doing a road trip with backseat passengers in this. I, that's where I think I would probably draw the line. Plus, as a driver, I don't wanna be that close to someone's breath. But if that sounds appealing, the Access Cab Taco here is available at Royal South Toyota in Bloomington, Indiana, the friendly dealer that let me borrow these trucks for today's video. Royal South has a knowledgeable staff and usually a diverse inventory. If you're in the market, check them out. And if you have to haul kids in a pinch, the access cab still comes with child seat latches. Now in the back of the double cab model is comparatively much better, but it's still cramped compared to a full size truck or really just smallish crossovers. This isn't faring too well. My knees still need to go out to the side of the seat and thigh support isn't great, but this is just a much more livable space. Like you can definitely manage a road trip with these back seats, plus you have a middle seat and really overall just more dignity and back support and cubbies. Up front with the double cab, the driving position is still a touch awkward, like riding in an elevator with your ex's mom. But I would have no complaints living with this thing, especially considering this is the TRD off-road with the advanced package. So this is going to have the JBL sound system, leather seats, and a sunroof. Plus, you can even get a 360 view camera. Additionally, one detail to the double cab I'd like to point out, the door closing experience is a little bit more solid. As I mentioned earlier, you can get a six foot bed with the double cab, but that is rare. With all Tacomas, you are going to find a composite material and that's crucial for using it as a truck and not caring about damaging the thing or having to put a liner on it. I'm also happy to see the good standard tie down points like the D-rings, which is standard truck stuff, but then the Tacoma will also have a bed rail system. So most of them will already have this accessorized, but you'll have these bed cleats, which will allow you to move around your tie down points very easily. And this has helped me move things like large freezers, mopeds, lawnmowers, kayaks, really it's very helpful. And then that bed rail system also helps for an easy and secure way to attach a camper shell. And you may be wondering, well, how would you even use a camper shell if you had a five foot bed? Well, there's actually like tent extensions that you can buy if you have a camper shell. 
um, and basically allows you to still have a sealed off area with your tailgate folded down. Five foot beds are overall great for people that are comfortable using ratchet straps and aren't regularly hauling around super bulky items. But if you primarily use your truck for work and not just to get from A to B and on vacation, the six foot bed is a clear choice for me. At technically six foot two, my long bed Tacoma has made moving places easier as it can swallow large couches and sometimes still even shut the tailgate, which can help make things a little less sketchy depending on what you're moving. Plus it sometimes makes a two trip journey into one. And that's the thing, you can move four by eight sheets, lumber or furniture with a five foot bed, but having the extra length makes it easier. Neither of these beds are going to replace the eight foot standard for a contractor, but the six foot box can make things less stressful. And if you need back seats, this'll work better than you may think. Leading me to believe that the access and double cabs or long and short beds are more interchangeable than I originally thought. It's more about which one will make your life easier. If you have no kids or no need to bring more than one person on road trips, an access cab should suffice. Constantly hauling bulky items? Maybe skip the five foot bed. If you need the best of both, dig for a double cab six foot bed. But if you're forced to choose because of availability or the lack of a manual transmission, it's easier for me to advise the double cab setup because the five foot bed is going to come with less limitations than the access cab for most people. And another factor is features. You can get a more loaded model with the bigger cab. So for that reason, me personally, I'm leaning towards the double cab, but let me know what your thoughts are. All things considered, which one would you rather have? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to help me take on the YouTube algorithm. If you wanna see more, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And thank you to my loyal patrons. I'll catch you in the next one.